The history of the Seminoles starts with Creek Indians that migrated from Alabama to Florida in the 1700s. Conflicts with other tribes and Europeans resulted in seeking new lands to live in peace. Tribes of so-called Lower Creeks moved to Florida. They were looking for new fields to plant better crops. In the 18th century, Florida was a Spanish colony. The rest of the North American continent mostly belonged to Great Britain. So when Indian tribes came to Florida, Spain encouraged such migrations as Indians became a buffer between Spanish settlements in Florida and the British colonies. In the 1770s, Florida Indians became known as Seminoles, meaning wild people or runaways. After the American Revolution, which lasted from 1776 to 1783, as a part of the Treaty of Paris, Spain regained control of Florida. When the British left Florida, Spanish colonists as well as settlers from the early country of the United States started populating it. Thus, Florida became significantly more American. The First Seminole War when Florida belonged to Great Britain, they often paid the Seminoles to fight against the American settlers. These old conflicts caused the U.S. Army to attack the tribes in the First Seminole War of 1817 to 1818. Forces under the command of General Andrew Jackson invaded Florida, attacked and pushed the Seminoles farther south. After several official and unofficial U.S. military expeditions into the territory, Spain formally gave up Florida to the United States in 1821. As soon as the United States acquired Florida, the Indians were forced to leave their lands and relocate to Indian Territory, present-day Oklahoma. Some Seminole leaders signed a so-called Payne's Landing Treaty in 1832 and partially moved within the next three years. But many Seminole chiefs refused to recognize the treaty and fled into the depth of Florida Everglades. The Second Seminole War As it was mentioned, in 1832, a small portion of Seminoles signed the Payne's Landing Treaty according to which the Indians had to leave Florida and move west within the next three years. When the U.S. military forces arrived in 1835, the Seminoles were ready for war. When American military troops, led by Major Francis Dade, were moving from Fort Brooke to Fort King, they were ambushed by the combined forces of several Seminole chiefs. The most well-known of those were Osceola, McCanopy, Alligator, and Jumper. Only one man from the American army survived the attack. The campaigns of the Second Seminole War were an outstanding demonstration of the Seminole warriors' capabilities. The Micos Jumper, Alligator, McCanopy, and Osceola, leading less than 3,000 warriors, opposed four U.S. generals with more than 30,000 troops. The Second Seminole War, which lasted from 1835 to 1842, was the most fierce war of the U.S. government against Indian tribes. The United States war expenses went over $20 million fighting the Seminoles only. The casualties exceed 1,500 soldiers and innumerous American civilians. The year 1842 is considered an end to the conflicts between the U.S. and the Seminoles, however, no peace treaty was ever signed. The Third Seminole War A Third Seminole War broke out in 1855. These conflicts were mainly over land between white landowners and some of the remaining Seminoles. The use of military patrols and money rewards for headhunting Seminoles significantly reduced their population to 200 people. The Third Seminole War ended in 1858. The Seminoles started the 1900s with low population hiding in the swamps of Florida where they were protected from the U.S. government. They hunted, grew crops, and fished. Northern Florida became heavily populated by the Americans and they needed more land. Political candidates promoted draining the Everglades, getting more support along the way. 
When the U.S. had gone through with this idea, it affected the Seminoles very greatly and caused them to leave the Everglades as they were no longer a habitable place. Most found work as farmhands or settled by rivers in small groups. The U.S. government finally took this into consideration and set aside small reservations for the Seminoles. Though the Indians did not use this opportunity at first due to mistrust towards the government. Seminoles Today Current Seminoles refer to themselves as the unconquered people descended from the 200 Seminoles that managed to evade being captured by the U.S. Army in the 1800s. Today, more than 2,000 live in six reservations located in Hollywood, Big Cypress, Brighton, Imokalee, Fort Pierce, and Tampa. The Seminoles try their best to maintain the lifestyle they led in the old days. Some still live in chickies or traditional clothing and celebrate the same holidays that their ancestors did. They also visit schools and festivals across the state educating people about their traditions.